Calc BC, we are picking back up with the 3.7 lesson. My apologies. Uh, we were right in the middle of just saying that this uh, third line segment here uh, between x equals 4 and x equals 7 had a slope of negative 3. We had a technology glitch, and uh, sadly we uh, had an issue there. Hopefully we're done with that. I'm really hoping so. Uh, but let's uh, take a look going from 7, negative 3 to 9, 3. You can see that you're rising up 6. From negative 3 to 3 is a 6, but you're moving over 2. Uh, so that would be a slope of 3. And finally, for our last part, that would be a slope of 0. So these slopes are actually acceleration, aren't they? So, um, you know, we're trying to answer when we have positive acceleration, when we have negative acceleration, when we have zero for our acceleration. And, uh, you know, just looking at these slopes, you can see that we start off with positive acceleration uh, between zero and two. Notice I'm not including uh, brackets here because that would be where uh, we could have our uh, endpoints, and uh, we don't have those defined. Uh, where else do we have positive slope? Well, that would be uh, looking at m equals 3. That would be from 7 to 9, wouldn't it? How about where we have negative slope? Well, I hope you can see that's between uh, 4 and 7. And then where are we at 0? Well, that would be between 2 and 4 and also between 9 and 10. So that's really where acceleration is going to be given to us. We can answer the speeding up and slowing down, but maybe if we look down and just see d here, graph the acceleration function on the defined time. You know, I guess I want to do that real quickly too. Um, acceleration can be negative, of course. And uh, you can see that we're going to be going between 0 and, and 2. Uh, looks like we're going to be going up to a, a 4, and then uh, over here at a 7, and then uh, up here to 9, and then to 10. Uh, our slopes, you can see, are going to be 9 halves, 3, and negative 3. And of course, 9 halves, if you think about that, uh, nine halves is really four and a half, isn't it? So, uh, you know, we can say here's a one, two, three, four, and then up here we have five. Uh, you could more or less see what's going to happen as we graph this. Uh, we start at zero to two with positive slope. I'm going to go ahead and say that's between right here. Notice I'm putting open circles. That's your m of nine halves, really, right? Uh, between two and four, we have a slope of zero or an acceleration of zero. Uh, pardon me, we need to come back down here and uh, say that this is one, two, three. That would be down here at negative three. And, uh, you know, between four and seven, we're going to have that tangent line slope uh, of uh, being down here at negative 3. Uh, between 7 and 9, we're going to be back up at 3. i going to erase that. And then finally, between 9 and 10, we're going to be right here at 0. Okay? Open circles on those endpoints because our derivative won't exist at corner points like that or even at an endpoint here, although you could make a, an argument about filling in uh, the endpoints at x equals 10 and x equals 0, uh, but we're not going to get too worried about that. Uh, we'll talk more about that as the year progresses. Uh, we've got one last thing we need to do, and that's addressing when we're speeding up and when we're slowing down. Uh, remember, with speeding up and slowing down, Speeding up, acceleration and velocity have to have the same sign. And slowing down, they're going to have opposite signs. Now, we could make a number line. We really could. A, a number line is fine. And 
I am going to address that because we did do that on the front page, but there's another way we can do it rather nice and quick. Uh, look, with velocity, if we were to make a, a number line going between, you know, 0 and 10 here, uh, velocity, you could see that at 2 thirds, uh, you know, our velocity was negative. Uh, between 2 thirds all the way out here to 6, velocity was positive. Uh, from 6 to 8, velocity was negative. And then from 8 to 10, uh, velocity was positive again. That's where velocity is this curve at the top of the page. When your curve is above the x-axis or t-axis, uh, velocity is positive. When it's below, likewise, we've got this uh, you know, velocity being negative. But for acceleration, I think you can see what's going on here. Between 0 and 2, I'm going to change colors just to make it jump out a little bit. Between 0 and 2, acceleration was positive. Between 2 and 4, acceleration was actually 0. I'm going to put, you know, a 0 up there. Uh, between 4 and 7, you can see that our acceleration uh, was negative. And then from 7 to 9, you actually have a positive acceleration. And then from 9 to 10, we're at 0. So you could begin to say, looking at the overlap, where do acceleration and velocity have the same sign? Well, you could say, well, certainly here, you know, they're both positive. Where are they going to be both negative? Well, that would be you know, between 6 and 7. Where else are they both positive? That would be, you know, between 8 and 9. So could you answer by looking at uh, a number line that way? Yes, you could. You, you definitely could. And you could say, look, I'm speeding up between 2 thirds and 2. Um, it looks like I'm speeding up between uh, 6 and 7. And I'm speeding up between eight and nine, and you'd say, well, where do we have opposite signs? Well, between zero and two-thirds. Be careful, between two and four, a plus and a zero don't have opposite signs. It, we've got to be so very, very careful about that. Uh, but between four and six, I hope you can see, actually, uh, that's where, yeah, you do have some opposite signs there. Velocity is positive, acceleration is negative. And uh, finally, uh, between 7 and 8, you have opposite signs. Hope you can see right in there. But there's another cool way graphically, and maybe your physics teachers will talk about this. Uh, where do you have the same sign? Well, that's where your curve is above the x-axis. That's your velocity being positive. And you need to have acceleration being positive. So where do you have positive slope? And where are you above the x-axis? So that would be here and here. Uh, and you could say, well, hey, that's great. That's your 2 thirds comma 2 and 8 comma 9. And then you could say, well, wait a minute, that's not all of our answers. Uh, shouldn't we also be concerned with, uh, you know, where we could have negative velocity with negative acceleration? That's where your curve is below the x-axis with negative slope. And that's only here between that 6 and the 7. So you can see how much quicker it is graphically to look at it this way. Likewise, you can say, where am I going to be below the x-axis? Uh, where is velocity going to be negative? But I'll have positive slope. Well, you could see it would be you know, right here and right here. That's between uh, 0 and 2 thirds and 7 and 8. That would be the two things I'm putting check marks on right here. Likewise, when is velocity positive? When are you above the x-axis with negative slope? 
Well, that's only between t equals 4 and 6. So personally, I think that's the fast way to do it. I think it's a much nicer way to do it. Uh, so we'll get a lot more practice on that. Hope this is making some sense. Uh, we're going to do a lot of this down the road.